My name is Karen. I live in the United States. I live with COPD, which I was officially diagnosed in 2001, but in 1991, my primary care physician told me that I had the beginnings of emphysema, and if I didn't quit smoking, which I did, I would be on oxygen very, very soon because I had the beginnings of emphysema at that time. Um, I actually didn't have a frustration at getting an accurate or timely diagnosis. Um, I suppose my frustration was that I really didn't understand that my condition would continue to get worse even though I had quit smoking. I also had chronic bronchitis. So in the 10 years between 1991 and 2001, even though I had quit smoking, I had done everything I thought I needed to do to avoid being placed on oxygen, I had episodes of bronchitis every winter, several times. So my lungs were continuing to be damaged, and they had been damaged quite quite badly by the emphysema. So uh, by 2001, I was severely out of breath. I couldn't do things that most people of my age, I was 55 by then, most people of my age could walk upstairs, could do grocery shopping, could clean their homes, could do things like that without getting severely out of breath, but I couldn't. Um, so I then was sent to a pulmonologist who put me through a multitude of tests and then announced to me, well, you have COPD, which I had never heard of. And I said, what's that? And he said, well, it's emphysema and, in your case, also chronic bronchitis. And I'm putting you on oxygen and sending you home with oxygen and three inhalers. And my frustration was, and anger, was that I thought I had done everything to avoid being put on oxygen. The challenges I encountered getting treatment and it's been several years ago because I'm 78 now, so we're looking back a lot of years in, initially. Um, I was still working full time. The challenges that I encountered were um, getting the right medications. Uh, as I recall, it was mainly the oxygen because oxygen wasn't really very portable back then. There were no POCs. I had to use tanks. Um, I had gained quite a bit of weight in the 10 years after I quit smoking. So I was kind of huffing and puffing and, and carrying the tanks, dragging the tanks into work with me. Took a few years before I did get a, a POC. And at that time, I I got one that was not lightweight. It was an 18-pounder, and you added batteries, and it was even heavier, but it was on wheels. Um, I know that the cost, even though I had insurance, it was my employer's insurance. Um, I don't recall there being any generics at that time. There were still mostly brand names, and they were quite expensive. So that, that was mainly the challenges I had at that time, was the expense. Um, it's gotten better over the years. There are now generics for most of the inhalers. And I don't know that I even was aware of pharmaceutical assistance programs for patients back then. I don't recall that. Yeah, there's a lot of stigma around COPD. In my case, yes, I did smoke. I smoked for 30 years. I smoked quite a few packs a day, two to three packs a day. Um, but not everybody is a smoker. And, you know, I have, I have a friend who is, has never smoked. She has no, no known reason for having COPD. She doesn't have the generic form. She didn't grow up in a, a smoking environment. She didn't work in, in a, uh, an environment in which she was exposed 
to anything toxic whatsoever. People have got to quit blaming people with COPD. The public has got to quit blaming us, everybody, for for being assuming that we were all smokers. Therefore, we more or less deserve this condition. You know, we we don't blame diabetics. We don't blame heart patients. You know, it, it's got to stop. Um, I don't mind telling people, yes, I smoked, but back in the day, in my day, we didn't we didn't really realize so much what we were doing to ourselves. I mean, my mother used to tell me, "Quit smoking," you know. And who listens to their mother, you know? But anyway, yes. There are limitations. There are quite a few limitations. Um, but I've done my darndest to not let it stop me from living. Yes, I'm slowed down, but I still get out. I'm an advocate. I travel. I go to conferences. I talk to people. I talk to young people. I talk to my friends. I talk. I talk to my children, my grandchildren, about the dangers. Of tobacco, of all tobacco, not just not just cigarettes. Of vaping, vaping is horrible. I'm an advocate for the COPD Foundation, for the American Lung Association. I also have some other comorbidities. I have recently, in the last two years, been diagnosed with the senior version of hydrocephalus. Who ever heard of that? Um, I've become an advocate for the um, Hydrocephalus Association. I, yes, I have limitations. I'm slower at at walking, perhaps, than my contemporaries. I might have to plan a little bit more than than others my age do. Uh, you know, when when I travel, I've got to plan ahead, maybe a little bit more. But it's not stopped me. I'm living my life. I'm going to continue to live my life. Um, there's nothing on daytime. Well, daytime TV is a little bit better now with the streaming channels. But still, you know, I get out and and I want to continue to live. I want to continue to let people know, especially others with COPD and other chronic conditions that. You need to. We, we we need to be out there. We need to let the world know that we exist, and that there needs to be funding and and research dollars. Um, you know, we can't. We just can't sit back and 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 hope that somebody else does it for us. It's about us. We've got to be vocal. We've got to let. People know we exist.